We've got an expert on cybersecurity and somebody that wrote books on it with Tom Clancy, Steve Pachenik. We're going to cover the waterfront here, Doc. StevePachenik.com. His new book's out there. You can find it at StevePachenik.com. Steve Pachenik Talks is the new book. Uh, but, Steve, uh, let's, let's get into your take briefly on what's happening with North Korea uh, and this whole move to say we're not going to show Team America. We're not going to show this movie now. Is that just an attempt to set the precedent for the feds to ban movies by fiat? No, I don't think so. I think what the problem really was, you have to understand the uh, dysfunctional uh, level of Hollywood. Number one, you have to understand Sony is not an American company. That was not made clear to anybody in the United States or the world. Sony is a Japanese company. It's a wholly owned subsidiary of a Japanese Daibatsu. So the issue really relates between North Korea and Japan, which has a long-standing history of discontent and fighting since World War II and prior to World War II. This has nothing to do with the United States. This has much more to do with Kim, Kim Jong-un, Kim Il-sung, who had a whole, long history against the Japanese. And this has to do with Abe, and his handling of his economy, his handling of cybersecurity, and where Japan stands relative to Korea. I don't think our own government really understood this in terms of the fact that this is really a Japan versus Korean narrative, not a United States versus a North Korean narrative. The North Koreans can say whatever they want, but they attacked the Japanese company. They did not attack Weinstein Group. They did not attack Warner Brothers. They did not attack an American company. Sony is a wholly owned Japanese company. You know, that's a great point. I was thinking that last week because, I mean, for those that don't know, the Chinese and the Japanese absolutely hate each other, at least from what happened in World War right. II. Even bigger atrocities by the Japanese in uh, what is now North and South Korea, and they still follow that World War II propaganda that the original, uh, you know, granddaddy came out of, that they're still at war with Japan. They're constantly threatening to nuke Japan, and so you're saying this is Japanese anti-North Korea propaganda? Oh, this is totally between North Korea and Japan. I mean, it's not an accident. They could have put any show that they wanted to, the fact that it was a North Korean semblance of, of the leader. There's all kinds of videos of the North Korean leader that's that's never been hacked. But the real reason is you have two anti-Japanese films coming on. Uh, you know, the one about, with uh, uh, what's her name, uh, Angelique Jolie, Unbroken. And then you've got this film, which comes as anti-Korean, but comes out of Japan. And the Japanese do not admit to the fact that they've killed hundreds of millions of people in Korea, in Japan, in Vietnam. This is an old story that has never been closed by the Japanese. And the nationalism in Japan has increased because Abe has an economic process problem. And in turn, Kim Jong-un is attacking Japan to warn them that this is not going to continue. By the way, much of the money that came out of North Korea came from the pachinko parlors of Japan, the gambling term. And the Japanese don't admit that. So you've got a whole special relationship that, unfortunately, our president got into a narrative that didn't belong to the United States. Sure. didn't belong to cyber attacking. It belonged to a province. Okay. So you think the theory that it's a false flag. Why is Kim Jong-un then saying that Obama and Sony did it? You know, I don't even know if he said anything, quite frankly. You don't really know who says what to whom. But I can tell you that the relationship between Japan and North Korea is a determinant relationship that's historically determined, not by the narratives that we create now. The minute I saw that, I said, Sony's in trouble because it's Japanese, and the man who runs it, Linton, who was the head of a publishing company, doesn't know anything. Doesn't know how to manage anything. Well, they admit issues. Sony is in trouble and may be sold. As well, usual, a very unique perspective. You may be right, probably are. Uh, we know that they're in a propaganda war against each other. I've just got to say, I, I think of the Japanese, despite their past uh, atrocities, we have our own here as a lot better like the Japanese, than, Alex. Than, than that Kim Jong-un. Alex, Japanese never had a Nuremberg trial like the Germans had. We have never indicted any of the Japanese war criminals who started biological warfare and killed American soldiers, British soldiers, Dutch soldiers, and killed Chinese civilians in Manchuria. We've never had that. And Hito has always been covered up as a butterfly enthusiast as opposed to the man who ran the Japanese biological warfare. So we have an old history here that comes out, and Kim Jong-un is emphasizing that point. The narrative goes away from America, right between Japan and North Korea. Now, they let you into North Korea, is that right? Yeah, I got in there through another passport. 
North Korea is basically a country like East Germany was for West Germany. It's, it's a failed state, but we cannot unite it with an increasingly effective state like South Korea. And the reason for that is if we put the two countries together, they will implode. As South Korea cannot handle the poverty and the scarcity of commodities and, and, uh, and the ruling class, which, based is on, which is based on kleptocracy. So basically, the United States and the other countries that are involved in Asia are doing it very slowly. And, and quite frankly, it's China's responsibility. China is the um, uh, guarantor for North Korea. China knows that very well. China has to handle North Korea. China will handle the hacking. And the Chinese are responsible when it comes to that. They know very well that North Korea can get out of control. So it's not an issue where the United States has to get into this or anybody outside of Hollywood, which is a dysfunctional institution, with another dysfunctional institution okay. in North Korea. All right, let's shift gears, because I want to get you on something about your life. It's very interesting. Uh, Dr. Steve Pachinik joins us right now. Uh, we don't know a lot about, uh, I mean, how you were brought up, what happened. You were born in Cuba, right? Tell us about that, and then give us your take on Cuba. Uh, I was born in Cuba as a, fact, as a matter of fact that the great liberal FDR did not allow a lot of the Holocaust survivors or my father and mother to come in through 41 uh, after the, during the war. My father was in the French Army. My mother escaped to Spain and Lisbon, and they brought uh, visas into uh, Cuba. It was like Casablanca, the movie. So I grew up, I didn't, I grew up there to the age of five or six. We left. My mother spoke Russian. We knew that the Russians were coming in little by little. I didn't know Castro would be a communist, but she didn't like the Russians. She didn't like the communists. She didn't like the fascists. So we eventually got to the United States. The fact that I have fought the Cubans, uh, Fidel's people, in Panama, and they're very effective. They're, they're very smart. Uh, they run a very effective PSYOPs campaign in Panama and elsewhere in Honduras and in Africa. The real issue is that after 50 years, the embargo really hasn't worked. What it's done, in effect, is made a lot of Midwestern farmers very wealthy, which I don't uh, gr uh, grudge their uh, wealth. They, they made over $300 million in wheat and, and commodity sales. But the point of fact is, it doesn't work anymore. And Cuba, after 50 years, is not a really a strategic threat to anybody along the United States. We have so many Cubans now in Miami and the United States, and with the uh, Burton Hill Act here, where they can come to the United States, touch the ground, they basically become United States citizens. So Cuba has always played an important part in the history of the United States. For example, during this, the Revolutionary War, Cuba was a transit point for which Benjamin Franklin and many of our founding fathers received uh, illegal money from Spain and France and uh, the guns and ammunitions in order to fight the British. Most people don't know that. But eventually, Cuban was, was in with the de facto province of the United States. It has never been a strategic problem. Even during the Cuban Missile Crisis, I think Kennedy was not capable of handling it. We, we had a stand down. Eventually, it came through. Uh, you know, Kennedy became a false legend. But the reality is, enough is enough. Cuba is really not our problem. Our problem now is really nothing. We've handled the Soviet Union very well. Now we've effectively handled Putin very well with the ruble uh, and the effectiveness of the American economy. We're just formidable. I mean, coming this Christmas, America has to understand how strong we are in terms of our capitalist structure. And this results from the Bretton Woods Conference of 1944, where everything in the world is denominated against the dollar, including the ruble. And we've just knocked down, in this administration, they've knocked down the ruble, they've knocked down the, the ratings of Russia, and the junk bond. And so now, effectively, the United States is a superpower, not only militarily, but economically. So but, Doctor, really let me stop you right there. Let me just stop you for a minute. Yeah. This is great game stuff. I mean, this sounds like British tactics to knock everybody else out so we're number one. But meanwhile, our same elite is taking our basic freedoms as well and foisting it into this global system. I mean, I want the American system to be successful and, and, and to be the culture of the world. But I wanted to do that through the fact that it's moral and upright. I mean, what did Russia do in the short term? to deserve a destabilization and an attempt to take its, its gas lines into Europe. Why, why, why shouldn't they be able to have a gas oh, pipeline into South to, Korea? It, honestly, it had nothing to do with their gas lines as much as it had to do with the fact that Putin has been a kleptocrat for so long that he's been ruining the Russian economy. This came out of the Russians themselves. When he created the Sochi Olympic, he spent over $50 billion. He wasted out the internal reserves. And then there was a flight of capital 
The issue of Crimea is a false issue. The real issue that came in was the issue that he destroying the country. And like basically Yeltsin and Gorbachev, he's a very weak leader. Although he looks tough, he looks very effective and he looks macho. He, in effect, was a very weak leader for Russia. What America needs is a strong technocratic leader in Russia that can actually create trade and can work in the international system. The, the point of fact here is not that we started it. Miss Merkel, who was the head of Germany, who knew him very well, basically said this cannot continue the way he's been acting as a kleptocrat, destroying the Russian economy, and the Russian people are now suffering. It was not a result of what we initiated. It was the effect of what we did in psychological warfare and economic warfare was a complete result of what Putin did to his own people. The Russians are great. They had nothing to do with it. This was directed to Putin, initiated by EU, and then followed by the United States. So are effective. you saying that the, the, the West is putting Putin out of his misery and that he was already Correct. killing the country? Yes. Yes, that's exactly what we did with Yeltsin. That's what we did with Gorbachev. Now we're doing with Putin. What Russia needs is a, is a clean, uh, uh, a clean minister who can run the country without any problems of kleptocracy and raping their own country. That's basically what we're doing. There's a man named Corden there who's a prime minister, who was a financial minister. He said it himself. Russia was destroyed by Putin. We only helped it. But no, never doubt our ability to run a psychological war for economic warfare when somebody comes in with tanks that are antiquated, airplanes that are antiquated, or threatens any of our partners in the EU. This is the formidable part of America and, and the fact that we can do something without even having to show our gun. Basically, we do it because we're very sophisticated. We've done it 20 years ago in economic warfare. We will do it again. It's not the imperialism of a Britain, British country. It's really the effectiveness of an international system that says we can no longer afford the kleptocracy that exists in one country in order to destroy it so that we can have the distorted trade. What we need is a fair trade system, even with Russia. It's for the Russian Yeah, but I mean, saying Russia's kleptocratic is the pot calling the kettle black. I mean, look how kleptocratic Perhaps. our elites are. Well, our, I don't say our big corporations are not kleptocratic. Believe me, I'm, I'm not a theologian here, but it turns out that, in fact, we have a far more resilient system that works not so much at the elite level as it does on the local and the community level. Speaking of that, I want to you shift gears. I want to shift gears yeah. and look at psyops. I'm not a psyops expert like you, but... I'm not a doctor of psychiatry either, but I can look at MSNBC, CNN, the White House, trying to stir up black on white crime, trying to create race riots, um, trying to say the police are the cause of all our problems, or certainly have been turned into paramilitary units. But why is the establisher, or maybe you disagree, trying to stir up civil unrest? I see it as more divide and conquer. Well, I don't know if it's divide and conquer. I don't think the president's been a very effective uh, leader internally in terms of articulating any position. The fact that he's black aggravates the situation. He knows that. Eric Holder is, is, is left. These are not two uh, African Americans or blacks who came out of America. These are guys who were born on the countries and came out of either uh, the Caribbean, as Eric Holder did, and Obama, wherever else he came out of Kenya. The issue at hand here has to do with uh, underlying simmering problems between the black community, which still has to get its act together without responding to agitators like Sharpton or Jesse Jackson. And the fact that you can even give credence to CNN, MSNBC, or any of the others is a joke, quite frankly, Alice, because we don't even have it anymore. This no, I know, but they CNN. are the, they have a small they audience, the worst. and it's their, they it's they their viewers. CNN, they've knocked out Fox News. You're the only news I listen to, Alex. Well, you're, I, I, what I'm saying I, is the remnant of the Democratic Party wants to run everything on racial division to change the subject from economics, and, and they're clearly doing it. I wanted to get your view on it. Because they're trying to push a narrative that's going to trigger a bunch of cop killing. Now, I know the system's pushing it. Why do you think they're pushing it? Well, the problem that they're pushing, they may be desperate in, in, in looking at the various issues because they have no other issue to look at. But it's a very dangerous issue to look at cop killing and, and, and go against policemen on the local level. The Blasio understands this, but I did not, I didn't vote for the Blasio. And certainly I know people in New York who didn't vote for him. Again, we voted for people who are not qualified to manage major system, as long as the Democrat or Republicans want to put forth candidates 
were not capable of managing complex systems, this is what will happen. They will go to the lowest level of prejudice and the lowest level of propaganda and promulgate it because that's all they know how to do. That's right. Very it's a like dumbing down to just mindless down. idiocy. Correct. Correct. And that's what de Blasio is doing. He has no idea how to run a complicated city like New York. He's not qualified like Bloomberg. He wasn't effective as Giuliani. It's not a question whether you're a Republican or Democrat. It's a question of did you do what Alex Jones did? Build a business, build it up. Stay right there. Final segment. Stay with us. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Sold out for weeks due to the difficult and extensive proprietary process behind its creation, the exclusive InfoWars Life Secret 12 formulation is now back in stock in the last limited shipment of 2014. The most bioactive form that has been created with our proprietary process. This ultra-clean vitamin B12 nutraceutical has been carefully crafted and developed over the last two years and is based on cellular science of how your body actively absorbs essential nutrients. Secret 12 is taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Vitamin B12 deficiency is linked to scores of serious problems. And Secret 12 is a fusion of two organic proprietary forms of vitamin B12, bringing you a true nutraceutical quality vitamin B12, Secret 12. Secret 12 is an excellent Christmas gift and is tailor-made to boost your New Year's resolutions. Supplies of Secret 12 are very limited. Secure yours today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. 2015 is almost here, and with it comes those New Year's resolutions to finally transform your body the way you want it. There's a reason over 88% of New Year's resolutions fail. Make this year different by equipping yourself with Oxy Powder, the next level in cleansing the body naturally. Using Super Oxygenation, Oxy Powder, available through InfoWarsLife.com, gently cleanses the body while you sleep with easy capsules. Tens of thousands of individuals have used Oxy Powder to cleanse their bodies and aid in their transformations. Even InfoWars Nightly News Director Rob Dew has been using Oxy Powder with incredible success. Took it that first day, and then I took it for six more days after that. 12 pounds melted off in about a week. I'd say a week. Seven days. 2015 can be different. Diet and exercise are important, but a lot of us have already tried that. Oxy Powder flushes it out. Secure your Oxy Powder at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. The average person's life is filled with unexpected challenges. Unlock the energy it takes to defeat these daily beasts with super male or super female vitality, specifically designed to assist the body in regulating proper hormone balance to create superior vitality in males and females. Supercharge and conquer your world at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-88-253-3139. The government's Department of Homeland Security is buying up loads of ammo. At the same time, they're restricting civilians' rights to own and purchase firearms. Can you put two and two together? Infidel body armor can stop every round, including hollow points and 308 sniper rounds. Is reasonably priced and fully legal. But for how long? Go to InfidelBodyArmor.com, spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L, BodyArmor.com. Infidel Body Armor just won't quit. Live from Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide, it's Alex Jones. I know you can see me now, here's a surprise. Coming up, report feds pressuring more doctors to ask patients about their guns. Ah, oh. under Obamacare, they now become total agents of the state. That's a Kit Daniels article, just went live at Infowars.com. And PrisonPlanet.com. Be sure and spread that out to everybody and get it on Facebook and Twitter. Gun control advocate urges kids to inform on parents, turn in their firearms. Yeah, I mean, they actually have them steal the firearms in the video and take them to the police. Talk about super crazy and super dangerous. Also, Walmart, Amazon, Kmart, Sears told to stop selling toy guns by the police in New York, who I guess are the state attorney general. Just thinks he's God. No judge, no jury. And the governor said, if you're a gun owner, just get out of the state. Or if you're pro-life, just get out of the state. Speaking of North Korea, I'm going to get Dr. Steve Pachinik's take on that. He's been to North Korea. He did a lot with South Korea. 
We're going to get his take on the situation with Russia. He grew up in Cuba, has a very interesting background. We're going to cover the waterfront, just bam, bam, bam with Steve Pachenik. Uh, but look at these headlines. North Korea's internet is having serious problems. It's already limited to just a few cities, as we showed satellite photos. Only two cities have power. That's being reported by The Verge newspaper, but we're to believe they ran these sophisticated hacking attacks. Well, I said last week, probably staged to bring in a bunch of cybersecurity laws, or it was other hacker groups, uh, and they're blaming North Korea. North Korea responded by saying, well, blow the whole U.S. up. How about you blow up the whole galaxy while you're at it? They can't even tie their shoelaces from what I know. North Korea threatened strikes on U.S. amid hacking claims. And they've come out and said that they did not do it and that it's a false flag by Obama. I hate to be agreeing uh, with North Korea, but that's certainly where it points. Sony gets a new threat. Anonymous says hackers aren't Korean. Release film or more hacks coming. Yeah, a bunch of these past hacks have been admittedly not North Korea. Of the Apple cloud, of, uh, of other major groups... We've got an expert on cybersecurity and somebody that wrote books on it with Tom Clancy, Steve Pachenik. We're going to cover the waterfront here, Doc. StevePachenik.com. His new book's out there. You can find it at StevePachenik.com. Steve Pachenik Talks is the new book. Uh, but, Steve, uh, let's, let's get into your take briefly on what's happening with North Korea uh, and this whole move to say we're not going to show Team America. We're not going to show this movie now. Is that just an attempt to set the precedent for the feds to ban movies by fiat? No, I don't think so. I think what the problem really was, and you have to understand the uh, dysfunctional uh, level of Hollywood. Number one, you have to understand Sony is not an American company. That was not made clear to anybody in the United States or the world. Sony is a Japanese company. It's a wholly owned subsidiary of a Japanese Daibatsu. So the issue really relates between North Korea and Japan, which has a longstanding history of discontent and fighting since World War II and prior to World War II. This has nothing to do with the United States. This has much more to do with Kim, Kim Jong-un, Kim Il-sung, who had a whole, long history against the Japanese. And this has to do with Abe and his handling of his economy, his handling of cybersecurity, and where Japan stands relative to Korea. I don't think our own government really understood this in terms of the fact that this is really a Japan versus Korean narrative, not a United States versus a North Korean narrative. The North Koreans can say whatever they want, but they attacked a Japanese company. They did not attack Weinstein Group. They did not attack Warner Brothers. They did not attack an American company. Sony is the wholly owned Japanese company. You know, that's a great point. I was thinking that last week because, I mean, for those that don't know, the Chinese and the Japanese absolutely hate each other, at least from what happened in World War right. II. Even bigger atrocities by the Japanese in uh, what is now North and South Korea, and they still follow that World War II propaganda that the original uh, you know, granddaddy came out of, that they're still at war with Japan. They're constantly threatening to nuke Japan, and so you're saying this is Japanese anti-North Korea propaganda? Oh, this is totally between North Korea and Japan. I mean, it's not an accident. They could have put any show that they wanted to, the fact that it was a North Korean semblance of, of the leader. There's all kinds of videos of the North Korean leader that's, that's never been hacked. But the real reason is you have two anti-Japanese films coming on. Uh, you know, the one about, with uh, uh, what's her name, uh, Angelique Jolie, Unbroken. And then you've got this film, which comes as anti-Korean, but comes out of Japan. And the Japanese do not admit to the fact that they've killed hundreds of millions of people in Korea, in Japan, in Vietnam. This is an old story that has never been closed by the Japanese. And the nationalism in Japan has increased because Abe has an economic process problem. And in turn, Kim Jong-un is attacking Japan to warn them that this is not going to continue. By the way, much of the money that came out of North Korea came from the pachinko parlors of Japan. The gambling term, and the Japanese don't admit that. So you've got a whole special relationship that, unfortunately, our president got into a narrative that didn't belong to the United States. Sure, didn't belong to cyber attacking. It belonged to a province. Okay, so you think the theory that it's a false flag? Why is Kim Jong Un then saying that Obama and Sony did it? You know, I don't even know if he said anything. Quite frankly, you don't really know who says what to whom. But I can tell you that the relationship between Japan and North Korea 
is a determinant re a relationship that's historically determined, not by the narratives that we create now. The minute I saw that, I said, Sony's in trouble because it's Japanese, and the man who runs it, Linton, who was the head of a publishing company, doesn't know anything. Doesn't know how to manage anything. Well, they admit issues. Sony is in trouble and may be sold. As well, usual, a very yeah. unique perspective. You may be right, probably are. Uh, we know that they're in a propaganda war against each other. I've just got to say, I, I think of the Japanese, despite their past uh, atrocities, we have our own here as a lot better like the than, the, the, than that Kim Jong-un. Alex, Japanese never had a Nuremberg trial like the Germans had. We have never indicted any of the Japanese war criminals who started biological warfare and killed American soldiers, British soldiers, Dutch soldiers, and killed Chinese civilians in Manchuria. We've never had that. And Hito has always been covered up as a butterfly enthusiast as opposed to the man who ran the Japanese biological warfare. So we have an old history here that comes out. And Kim Jong-un is emphasizing that point. The narrative goes away from America, right between Japan and North Korea. Now, they let you into North Korea, is that right? Yeah, I got in there through another passport. North Korea is basically a country like East Germany was for West Germany. It's, it's a failed state, but we cannot unite it with an increasingly effective state like South Korea. And the reason for that is, if we put the two countries together, they will implode. South Korea cannot handle the poverty and the scarcity of commodities and and uh, and the ruling class, which based is on which is based on kleptocracy. So basically, the United States and the other countries that are involved in Asia are doing it very slowly. And, and quite frankly, it's China's responsibility. China is the uh, guarantor for North Korea. China knows that very well. China has to handle North Korea. China will handle the hacking. And the Chinese are responsible when it comes to that. They know very well that North Korea can get out of control. So it's not an issue where the United States has to get into this or anybody outside of Hollywood, which is a dysfunctional institution, with another dysfunctional institution, okay. North Korea. All right, let's shift gears, because I want to get you on something about your life. It's very interesting. Uh, Dr. Steve Pachenik joins us right now. Uh, we don't know a lot about, uh, I mean, how you were brought up, what happened. If you were born in Cuba, right? Tell us about that, and then give us your take on Cuba. I was born in Cuba as a, fact, as a matter of fact that the great liberal FDR did not allow a lot of the Holocaust survivors or my father and mother to come in through 41 uh, after the, during the war. My father was in the French Army. My mother escaped to Spain and Lisbon, and they brought uh, visas into uh, Cuba. It was like Casablanca, the movie. So I grew up, I didn't, I grew up there to the age of five or six. We left. My mother spoke Russian. We knew that the Russians were coming in little by little. I didn't know Castro would be a communist, but she didn't like the Russians. She didn't like the communists. She didn't like the fascists. So we eventually got to the United States. The fact that I have fought the Cubans, uh, Fidel's people, in Panama, and they're very effective. They're, they're very smart. Uh, they run a very effective PSYOPs campaign in Panama and elsewhere in Honduras and in Africa. The real issue is that after 50 years, the embargo really hasn't worked. What it's done, in effect, is made a lot of Midwestern farmers very wealthy, which I don't uh, gr uh, grudge their uh, wealth. They, they made over $300 million in wheat and, and commodity sales. But the point of fact is it doesn't work anymore. And Cuba, after 50 years, is not a really a strategic threat to anybody along the United States. We have so many Cubans now in Miami in the United States and with the uh, Burton Hill act here where they can come to the United States, touch the ground, they basically become United States citizens. So Cuba has always played an important part in the history of the United States. For example, during the, the Revolutionary War, Cuba was a transit point for which Benjamin Franklin and many of our founding fathers received uh, illegal money from Spain and France and uh, the guns and ammunitions in order to fight the British. Most people don't know that. But eventually, Cuban was in with the de facto province of the United States. It has never been a strategic problem. Even during the Cuban Missile Crisis, I think Kennedy was not capable of handling it. We, we had a stand down. Eventually, it came through. Uh, you know, Kennedy became a false legend. But the reality is, enough is enough. Cuba is really not our problem. Our problem now is really nothing. We handled the Soviet Union very well. Now we've effectively handled Putin very well with the ruble. Uh, and the effectiveness of the American economy. We're just formidable. I mean, coming this Christmas, America has to understand how strong we are in terms of our capitalist structure. 
And this results from the Bretton Woods Conference of 1944, where everything in the world is denominated against the dollar, including the ruble. And we've just knocked down, in this administration, they've knocked down the ruble, they've knocked down the, the ratings of Russia, and the junk bond. And so now, effectively, the United States is a superpower, not only militarily, but economically. So but doctor, let me stop you right there. Let me just stop you for a minute. Yeah. This is great game stuff. I mean, this sounds like British tactics to knock everybody else out so we're number one. But meanwhile, our same elite is taking our basic freedoms as well and foisting it into this global system. I mean, I want the American system to be successful and, and, and to be the culture of the world. But I wanted to do that through the fact that it's moral and upright. Uh, com is his website. Okay, Doc, so we covered a lot of different issues today. Interesting perspective. I do monitor what I'd call dinosaur media, and, and the, I mean, that's all they've got because big government, socialism, collectivism didn't deliver, so now it's just class warfare. I just, it's sick to watch big crony capitalists like George Soros and the big foundations. Full tilt funding racial division and infighting, but I guess that's what they need to do to keep us from ever identifying them. Uh, what is your brief prognosis for the new year, the economy, and uh, what's coming? I think my prognosis is very, uh, very good. Number one, our economy is going to be growing very quickly as the uh, oil price is going down to probably forty dollars a barrel. Number two, we're growing at a very fast rate, three to five percent year. Uh, small businesses are increasing capacity. Uh, local uh, government is becoming more and more uh, effective as opposed to national government. We are going to stop going into other wars. We're going to start ceasing the war. We're going to have a, a Iran a detente and probably Palestine will be recognized. That's a far stretch, but I would say that's where it's going to go. We're going to realign the Middle East, and I think America will remain the superpower for quite another five to ten years without any effort, without use of military force. What about I'm China? Optimistic. What about other hot spots? China, China has to work with us because um, Americans have to understand one thing. Every renminbi or every yuan that the Chinese have is, is calibrated against the dollar. So they can have as many renminbi as they can, but it really is against the dollar. But China is now in a real state of economic problems. I don't wish it collapsed, but General, uh, President Xi, XI, has now gotten rid of a lot of the kleptocrats, just like he did of Putin. Like, you know, he, got, he could have gotten rid of Putin. He's getting rid of all of the corruption within the military, within the Communist Party, and he's trying to uh, regionalize the growth areas so they can grow. But unfortunately, China cannot grow as effectively as the United States. It will not be a dominant power. Even though its economy is larger than ours, our per capita income is very low compared to ours. Whereas in the, whereas in the 20 to 30,000, theirs is in a couple of thousand. So there's no comparison between China and the United States. China will always work with us or against us, but for the most part, China is not a threat. What about uh, their we, threats to go in and grab Philippine or Japanese islands? Uh, it's, it's only a threat. Basically, we've had the Spratly Island issues, which I've written about 20, 30 years ago, but basically we act as the intercessor. Our sink back, our Navy is very effective. Without our Navy, China cannot go through the Straits of Malacca or into the, uh, uh, the seas and, and the Pacific Ocean without our protection. So China needs us to protect their shipping. We protect 98% of this shipping. What do you make of China starting military action against Vietnam? Well, they can start it, but they have to remember they were twice beaten by Vietnam, and that's quite dangerous. The Chinese know the Vietnamese have beaten them twice. It's not a good uh, beginning for the Chinese. They're not going to continue with that. China has a bigger internal problem than it has external problems. And, and Xi is a very ruthless uh, leader, and he will keep uh, China controlled, but it has to be controlled. Within a year, one year, you have 175,000 riots that have to do with corruption. Corruption, not communism. And we're so, seeing attacks on police and government when they're seen as not delivering justice. As you said, over 100,000 riots a year. Uh, I think if we see more government corruption here, we're going to see that phenomenon expanding. Well, the United States is interesting. We, we are a very quiet people, but basically it pushes too far. We do have the Second Amendment, and it's always there. We don't need to use it right now.
But I agree with you. We need to, whoever, whoever holds their fire to the end wins in this fight. Dr. Pachenik, thank you. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. We'll be back tomorrow live. I'm going to do some uh, overdrive. InfoWars.com forward slash show. Radio Network.